Good Friday afternoon, viewers of Apple Stump, Bushcraft stuff and things. We're back with another 2004 vintage MRE review. This time, from the Warnock Company, it's menu number one, beefsteak with mushrooms. And that has, of course, the main entree, beefsteak with mushrooms. Western beans, jelly, crackers, uh, salmonella shake, as my buddy Polly over in the UK likes to call them. Doesn't say what flavor, but a dairy shake. Accessory packet B, a spoon, and flameless ration heater. Accessory packet B is said to contain coffee, sugar, creamer, salt, chewing gum, matches, toilet paper, hand cleaner, uh, red pepper, that would probably be the Tabasco sauce, and some kind of candy. Let's take a look. Today's guest peelable seal opener is this K-Bar made trail knife, or camp knife. Nice day glow orange handle so you can find it if you drop it out in the woods. I haven't ever used it to cut anything so we'll see how sharp it may or may not be. I'm not even going to mess with trying to peel that. Oh. Just like having a zipper on that packet. Let's see what you've got inside. Here comes everything. There's the spoon since it popped out that way. Uh, okay. Beef steak with mushroom gravy. And packing date of 287th day of 2004. So far, so good. Ration heater, flameless, 309th day, 2004. Everybody's favorite, MRE crackers, 309th day of 2004. Accessory packet B. 317th day of 2004. This must be the candy, and it feels like a couple of Tootsie Rolls. 315th day of 2004. Chocolate Dairy Shake Powder. I'm going to have to do some research and find out if this is the salmonella shake or if this might be safe. It's in a different shape of pouch. doesn't have the little reclosable top on it. And let's see if I can find a date stamp on there. There we go. It's embossed on one side. 292nd day of 2004. You may be able to see that there. Kind of in the middle of the screen. And last but least, Western style beans, 289th day, 2004. All right, let's arrange this a little bit better and get it open. All right, let's find out what the mystery candy is. Tootsie roll, that was right. Two points for me. And the grape jelly, I forgot to show you, 204th day of 2004, it's up there, kind of in the middle, I don't know if you can read it, it's pretty hard to read, grape jelly, feels kind of congealed on one end, that was probably the end that was down while that thing was sitting, but other than that, nothing squishes out of it, so we'll see how it turns out. Crackers, everybody's favorite, because they generally hold up pretty well. And they're just barely, just barely chipped on that lower corner, but other than that, they look alright. 
put the grape jelly with them. There's the beans. Do a little inspection to the pouch. I don't see any obvious pinholes there. Feels kind of uh, solid. Of course, it would be after close to 14 years in the envelope. And here we have the main course. Apparently vacuum sealed. Vacuum looks like it held up. There's some data on the envelope. You can read what it says. Smell test says don't smell anything there. And here we have the chocolate shake mix sitting in my double wall steel cup. Why? Because it keeps things cold and keeps things hot. Last one, open up the flameless ration heater. So let's take a look at putting the entree and the beans inside here in the FRH envelope. So I'm going to kind of coax that heating element out here a little bit. And I will try to get both of them in there. Ultimately, the way on this one may be one of them goes in the pot of boiling water, or both of them do, because the FRH won't heat them up adequately. Don't know yet if it's going to work. Look at that. favor the main entree so I'll put it this way and there's no way that's going to fit back inside the box it came in so I'm going to put it back in the plastic pouch as soon as we add some water. Now this water is room temperature, I should say garage temperature, which out there right now is around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe higher. So I'll put a little bit of that in there. Not quite up to the level, so I'll add a little more. Okay. Turn this over and get it hydrated. These two pouches are sandwiched together so tightly that it's practically impossible. So they're in there. Hold this over, and I'm going to lean this up against the tripod. It'll be out of camera range there, but this tripod is going to be my rock or something. I can hear that cooking. Let's see if I'll hold it up to the... Let's see if you can hear it. Probably not. I can smell it too, so it's working in there. me while I try to arrange a better rock or something. There we go. I like that arrangement better. Alright, I'm going to go do a little research and find out if the chocolate flavored shake from 2004 is going to give me salmonella. Because if it is, I'm not going to drink it. The news is that I'm probably not going to drink that. The information on mreinfo.com was not really clear. The data that they had listed for the Warnick Company and this particular year, uh, including the chocolate dairy shake powder fortified with calcium and vitamin D, was uh, in red and lined out. So I don't know if that means that's not good information anymore or what. But not particularly anxious to get salmonella, so. 
I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to set the spoon aside as well because I have lots of these and mix up the tea with the one I already have. So let's get about the business of opening up the accessory packet B. This is actually says 4B. Lighthouse toilet tissue, also good for other things. Moist towelette, also good for other things. Domino sugar packet, it feels nice and uh, granular in there instead of caked and stuck together. A little packet of iodized salt, same thing for that. You can probably hear it. Non-dairy creamer feels powdery in there. I don't think it's been compromised. Haven't come across one yet that has been. Little damp proof matches. White tips this time. Most of the ones I've had have been red. Red tips. These are white. So that worked good. While we're at it, I'm going to demonstrate a little trick for you. I've seen it other places probably. Take one of the matches. And if you have a blade or something to start the process of making that paper split in half. Without splitting your finger in half. Is what I just tried to do. Okay, so we have the paper of the match in two pieces and we'll pull it apart, and we have now two matches. So I'm going to use each half of it. Put this down here and get it out of the way. Okay, here we go. First half. fire potentially right second half less paper on that but about the same amount of burning material and there we have two fires out of one match I like that trick and so now I have demoed that trick Taster's Choice Instant Coffee, it's freeze dried, feels granular, not caked together, not compromised as far as I can tell. And our red pepper is actually ground red pepper and not Tabasco. Surprise, surprise. And two pieces of white MRE gum. Don't know if I'll use those or not. Usually I end up putting all this stuff back in the packet and I put it in my admin box for use on the trail or camping or something like that. I'm going to use the sugar. I'm not going to use the sugar. Moving right along. Crackers, the old sniff test. Slide that up a little bit. Let's see where the corner of that one broke off. We'll smell it. it. Smells stale. There's the other one. It smells stale. All right. Let's break a few pieces up. And we'll make a little nozzle in the jelly. Do so with, oops, some jelly came out already. What do you know about that? And here we go. The last one I had was blackberry jelly and if you watch that video you might remember that it even has seeds in it it looked pretty good this looks good too 
Looks like uh, grape jelly right out of a jar. There wasn't any squirting out of contents or escape of gas when I opened that packet. Give it a smell. Hardly any, hardly any smell at all. So I'm gonna go taste it. Relatively tasteless. The jelly adds to it, but the dryness of the crackers just sucks it all away. All right, Tootsie Roll. And these have a little cardboard sleeve that covers three sides of them, so it's hard to tell by feeling except on the top that it feels like a Tootsie Roll. And they're pretty easy to open by hand. Pretty bendable. It's very ductile still. Ductile? Ductile. So we'll try a segment of that. That tastes as close to a new Tootsie Roll as I could possibly imagine. When I was a kid they had a commercial for Tootsie Rolls that played on TV and it a little jingle and the words included chewy chewy tootsie roll lasts a long time. That one's pretty chewy and if you took it one segment at a time you could make it last quite a while. Let's check in with the FRH and the... Oh my goodness. You can slice down the side. I did that just now so... Whoa. Okay that's nice and hot on both sides. Barely hold on to it. And put it back in the plastic pouch. Put the top back down and put it back on my rock or something for a while. I do have a pot of boiling water on the standby when I take those out for the last time to check them. If they're not hot enough to where I like them and I'm confident that they've been heated, they will go into the hot water for 10 minutes. Let's try another little piece of cracker with jelly. So, and there's a shout out to Polly over in the UK. There's a jelly buddy. crackers are so dry that I could imagine having found them outside in 100 degree weather where they'd been for a long time. I could barely taste the jelly flavor they're so dry but I have some ice water here standing by. Took a swig of that and instantly the jelly flavor popped up. It's pretty uh, authentic in terms of the flavor where most all of us are accustomed to. For Grape jelly that comes out of a jar, not necessarily the top name brand, but at least um, store bought grape jelly tastes like it. Okay, have another segment of Tussie Roll. It's chewy, there's nothing hard or um, dried out tasting about it. It tastes like a Tussie Roll just bought in the store. It's the size of the kind that used to come in big bags with candy for Halloween. I think they use little tiny ones now, but it's the smaller size. It had five segments on it. The real deal. So while we're waiting for the entree to finish and the second course, I'm going to show you, because you may not have seen me do this before, another hack for the toilet paper. So there we have the Lighthouse MRE toilet paper that we all love so much. And here we have Coleman Camp Soap, biodegradable. So it comes in little leaves or pages, kind of like, if I can get one. 
one. And all you do is get your hands wet and then rub this between your hands. It dissolves really fast and turns into enough soap to wash your hands with. So what I like to do with these is fold them in half lengthwise like so and then stick them in the toilet paper on the top because there's more room there. There we go. So then I know that whenever I reach for an MRE toilet paper packet, there's a leaf of soap in there. So if it's in one of my kits, it has soap in it. There's the Lighthouse toilet paper, and just like a magician, there's the soap leaf, folded in half. You pull that out, get your hands wet. Presumably they're not wet already. And rub your hands together, it gets nice lather. Biodegradable, doesn't take much to rinse it off or wipe it off with a paper towel, napkin. Tuck that back in there. And there's your free tip on MRE toilet paper and putting soap inside the packet, and it's worth exactly what you paid for it. And since we didn't get any beverage based powder or iced tea mix or anything with this menu, um, it had the chocolate dairy shake, which is questionable, so again, I'm not going to mix it up or taste it. Um, Quite frankly, because if I mix it up, I'd be tempted to taste it, and I probably would. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, since I have my cup right here, I'm going to make some... This is a really difficult recipe to master, and I'll be back in just a minute. The moment of truth has arrived. We're going to take a look at how hot the... Okay, if this was a really cold day, that would feel really good because that's very, very hot. I would say 120, 125 degrees, something like that. Not quite hot enough to burn you, but hot enough to know it's there. For sure. So out comes the flameless ration heater with the pouches in it. And from there, this here because I don't want any of the stuff that's in the FRH just to make its way into my spoon. So there they are. Is it hot? No. See the vacuum packing still intact there. These are going in the hot water for about 10 minutes or so and we'll check back when they're done and proceed from that point. Stand by. Well, maybe you heard that. The timer just went off, so that means the stuff's been in the boiling water for 10 minutes. I replicated this old family recipe passed down through generations and cleaned that cup out with boiling water to get rid of any salmonella traces. Put back some more water in. Five ice cubes. I did it twice in a row. That takes culinary talent. Alright, let's go get those pouches out of the boiling water and see what's what. Here comes the western style beans. We may hear from them later. And here comes the beef with mushroom sauce. Something interesting I just noticed about the beef with mushroom sauce is, whoa, look at this. So, the inner plastic wrapper appears to be still intact, or the inner plastic lining of the retort pouch, but the outer pouch did not fare so well. Um, pressure from heating it up inside expanded that, and now I can smell um, some of the contents couldn't before. So that weighs in favor of not eating it. But let's get it out of here and see what it looks like.
very hot. Unfortunately, when you're wondering about botulism, it takes really high heat way beyond boiling water to uh, kill the spores. It takes, I think, 240 degrees Fahrenheit for a number of minutes, maybe half an hour. And you can only achieve that in a pressure cooker or an oven. So, there it is. Doesn't look bad, but looks can be deceiving, can they not? And while we're at it, let's open up the beans. Now this pouch did not separate, and I don't detect any smell from them at all. So that'll come later. Maybe. Let's add the assistance from the spoon if we can. Yay, spoon! I didn't slit it far enough down, I don't think. There we go. Alright. They smell like chili. If you were to get uh, Nally's or one of the popular brands of chili and open the can, it smells like that. So I guess when they say Western style beans, they're talking about chili. Very strong pepper smell. They're not, not like red hot, but they, they definitely have peppers in them. No question about that. Take a look. So the beans have little mystery particles in them. Not sure what they are. Possibly some meat. Looks like ground up hamburger or something. I'll get that off the spoon. There we go. Okay, so there you have that. Okay. Smell test, there's uh, pepper in there, some vinegar probably, and cilantro maybe. It smells like chili out of a can, and I may just go ahead and try that, so here we go. It's exactly what it tastes like, chili out of a can. It's not overpoweringly hot, in fact there's very little heat to it whatsoever. The beans are very soft and mushy. Um, I'm not sure if that might be a piece of hamburger. Let's give it a shot. Nope, that was just a little bean. So this may be meatless chili. Tell you the truth, I didn't look at the ingredients list that close, so I don't know. Calls for another sample of our cracker and grape jelly. Try those two together. Everybody likes crackers with grape jelly and chili, right? The same same uh, minute. Well, it's not too bad. It's pretty dry. The chili's not dry, but the crackers sure are. And just so you know, I didn't even try a spoonful of that dairy shake because me and Salmonella are not going to become friends. So what can we garnish this tray with? Well, here's some strawberries out of my garden. 
My strawberry plants are one year old. I put them in the ground about a year ago and they have spread all over the place. They're taking over that planter. They're not the king size giant ones that you see in the store sometimes, but they're nice. They smell like strawberries, they taste like strawberries. All right. So here's the beefsteak patty, and that's what it appears to be, uh, pressed and formed hamburger, kind of like Salisbury steak, children. I can't imitate South Park very well, but there we are. Looks like Salisbury steak, the gravy looks good. It smells okay, but because that outer envelope appeared to be compromised, at least when I pulled it out of the boiling water, uh, we're not tasting that today, which is a shame because I would really like to. But they don't pay me enough to get real sick doing this. In fact, they don't pay me anything for doing this. So, you want a bite? Go right ahead. Let's have strawberry. That sounds better. Pinch the little green part. Yes, indeed. That's good. I don't have to worry about salmonella because I know where they grew and what's been on them. No, I don't eat the stems. I looked out there this morning and there's four or five more that will probably be ready in a day or two. I don't have a very productive strawberry patch right now, but it's coming along. It's probably gotten maybe 20 or 30 of them off of there so far. Well, there you have it. I wish I could have tried that, but it wasn't to be. This is pretty good, but it's no more good than uh, canned chili from a supermarket. But I would give it a thumbs up overall. I'd eat that, and uh, not that because it was compromised, but I'd eat it if it hadn't been, and it looks simply delicious. Tootsie Rolls came through in fine shape. They get a thumbs up. Crackers and grape jelly. Crackers are always stale after 14 years. The grape jelly came through in good shape. And the chocolate dairy shake, didn't even try one drop of it. So I can't report to you on what that was like other than what it smelled like. And I'll have to tell you that when I opened the envelope and sniffed it or smelled it, it smelled a little bit stale. Not so far as maybe rancid, but stale for sure. So it may not have been that good. When it was mixed up, it smelled fine and it had great texture. But, eh. Can't really rate the contents of the accessory packet. They're all pretty much the same. The matches worked and the rest of it will go in my Apostles box, my administrative box for camping and backpacking supplies. Got to see my Gerber knife and that it actually works. Ooh, let's carve some candling with that. Okay, so that's it for 2004 Vintage Warnick Company of McAllen, Texas. Menu number one, beef steak with mushrooms. Again, it's kind of a Sad case that that ruptured. I wish it hadn't. But everything else was passable and edible. And with the exception of the chocolate milkshake uh, and this, we actually did eat it. 
Applestone Bushcraft, stuff and things, bidding you a fond farewell. We'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe, and stay cool.